What's up, everybody? Brett here, back today with some more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. I have no idea what I've named this video. Probably something like, "Where, where's the beef? Um, I got all the bacon. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I've named it yet. But take a look at my glorious Beastman build. And even my opponent, Count Garen of Kassab, whose build I quite enjoy. I love the mix-up, the mashup of really, like, sweet Norskin units. You know, we'll, we'll look at my build in a second. Look at this. Chieftain and Vermeer Balefiend, the a nice kind of cheap combo. Let's actually go ahead and pause this for a second. I want to check out his build. Because this is kind of a build after my own heart. And in the in the moment of like playing this game, I didn't get a chance to fully appreciate uh, what it is that he had done. So let's see what he took. Let's see what his choices were. Because he's got the Flaming Axe of Cormac. Interesting. Fire damage. I, haven't, I don't think I've ever taken this. Fire damage... 22% base weapon damage and then 9 melee attack. That makes him a pretty decent duelist. And on horseback, pretty hard to get away from. Especially with Foe Seeker increasing the speed. More charge bonus from Potion of Full Hardiness. And then Fight or Die. Actually quite ferocious, if not targeted heavily. Um, not a ton of HP, not a ton of armor. Uh, very vulnerable to missile fire. Uh, but if you just let this guy wail on you, he'll hurt you. I would probably cut almost every ability off of him and just take him on foot. Uh, but that's, that's just me. Let's see what my opponent did here for spells. I noticed a ton of spell casting this game. Look at this uh, Famir Balefiend's like one pimp hand. Quite in quite interesting. Um, quite ugly as well. What spells did you take, buddy? Because I kept seeing all these different spells and I was kind of confused during the battle. I was like, how do you have so many damn spells? I saw a Pit of Shades. I saw a penum Penumbral Pendulum. Got to slow down. Can't say that word too fast. I saw a Scroll of Shielding. Scroll of Power. Arcane Conduits. Enfeebling Foe, I saw in the battle. Melkos, this dude was casting spells all day, every day. And then from the miss, Missile Resistance. Too bad with my Beastman build, no missiles. Everybody, Everybody's getting ripped apart. No missiles in my build. We got tons of Berserkers here. How many exactly? Two? Two Berserkers. Two Marauder Champions, which you don't see that much. Or at least I don't see it that much. They're very expensive. Uh, but they're so beastly. They always seem to fight almost to the last man. And they chew up whatever it is they're fighting. If you take the standard variant, they're armored and shielded instead of the great weapon variant. And they have really good melee defense. And damn good weapon strength for an infantry unit as well. They're, they're pretty awesome. Norskin Ice Trolls. I know a lot of people hate these guys, but they have great stats. And then Frostbite as well, lowering speed. If you use them correctly, um, they can do a lot of work. I would probably pair them with the Famir Warriors. Get Armor Sunning, Magic Damage, as well as Frostbite. And just tons of armor piercing, huge weapon strength, all in the same stuff. These guys are also anti-large, which is worth knowing. I've got plenty of large in my build. Let me make sure real quick. Yep, Razor Gore Herds do count as large targets. Uh, figured that, but it's it's definitely worth making sure. Marauder Horse Masters. Here we can sit for just a second and compare Horse Masters versus uh, your standard horsemen. It's a little bit annoying. That you can't, it's not that easy to tell. I guess, it, maybe it is. They have capes. <laughs> capes, furry capes is, is the difference. And I think that's about it. Maybe the horses look cooler. No, it just looks like capes are the uh, deciding factor between being a standard horseman and a master. But you can see a lot more armor. More leadership. What other stats are we looking at? Better melee combat stats. Better charge bonus. More ammo. 10 more range. I actually didn't know they had more range. And better missile strength. They're better overall, like every single category. I didn't quite realize that. I thought they had a few better stats, but I didn't realize they literally juiced every single stat for those dudes. Let's see if there's any uh, performative difference between them in this battle. Um, and then we have the Beast of Tashnar, the Anti-Large. Let's go ahead and slow motion this. They are frenzied super fast. They are super fast. 95 speed and Anti-Large. They're, they're a great unit. Could, I could see them being an auto-include uh, versus the Beastmen. And then in the back here, we've got Armored Skin Wolves with their regeneration. And then Marauder Spearmen just to finish it up. The reason why I decided to pause this battle is because I Vanguard deployed my entire front line. I've got two groups of Ungor Spearmen on either flank. And in the center, I've got Ungor Herds. So all my guys are basically invisible at this point. We've got Stalk. And... It's not until I get really close that my opponent is going to really understand what's going on here. And in addition to the Ungor Herds, I've got Harpies Vanguard deployed to either side as well. Two groups 
on each side. So my opponent saw my harpies, and he's like, oh, hell yeah, I'm coming in with my horse masters and my horsemen, and we're going to, you know, snipe some harpies. But what he didn't see is my Ungor spearman herds hidden here. I was going to let him get a little bit closer. I was drawing him in, and I was going to try to go one up and one around and see if I couldn't pin them in and then attack with the harpies. Uh, but they were revealed a bit sooner than I thought, and my opponent did react uh, in a relatively quick fashion. The main thing here for me was that because I knew there was such a difference uh, in deployment zones between what I Vanguard deployed and what I didn't, I knew that in order for me to have the most effect with all of these cheap units, I would have to engage simultaneously as as well as I could. So everything attacks. The first thing that I, I gave movement orders to were my Razor Gore herds. The way that I want this timed, I want these guys to hit the front lines uh, at the same time, or slightly before uh, my Ungor herds are able to engage. So they break, you know, whatever the front line is. Um, in this case, nothing with any type of charge defense. Uh, but they're going to hit. They're not heavily armored. They have massive weapon strength. Really, really poor combat stats. It's their charge bonus and weapon strength that you're really counting on in their big HP pool. They do have anti-infantry and armor piercing. So they will tear up some Marauder champions in a kind of a 1v1 scenario. And then to back them up, I have the Unbreakable Chaos spawn. They do have excellent weapon strength. Just going to be good versus infantry. Uh, also, you know, poison damage if they can spread that around. And then my leadership core here, I have one leader who I'm going to be very careful with this game because he is my only leader. I'm going to be babysitting him. He's a basic beast lord on a chariot, and he's going to be leading two other Razor Gore chariots, which I'm going to kind of attack with simultaneously. Um, and then we're going to split up at some point and, uh, you know, start ravaging whatever infantry we can, use their armor piercing if we don't have infantry to, you know, deal whatever damage to a lot of these monstrous type units, uh, but also to pin in with their mass, whatever we can. So they got off a few volleys here, but nothing serious. I mean, my Ungor Spearman herd are kind of in the forest. They probably, uh, you know, didn't take didn't take as much damage as they might otherwise have on open ground. But we are going in hot. My opponent not really changing his uh, formation that much. You know, he's pulling back some of his elements. I guess the beasts of Tashnar are coming in. I would I might be circling the wagons here, man. I might be like putting myself in full box mode. So that my Marauder Chieftains and my Vermeer Balefiend's Encouragement Aura could hit everything that I have. But let's see what my opponent chooses to do as the music rocks us, uh, rocks us out. So now I'm going for the full surround. I see that my opponent is realizing that he's not going to get his skirmish done. The Beasts of Tashnar are not going to get an easy pick. So he does, you know, bring everything back. But I would, I would be circling. I'd be trying to put my, you know, the faces of all my formations facing outward. Chariots coming in. You can see I gave the orders here. Razor Gore Herds going in. Hell yeah. And they took so much damage on the charge. We didn't kill a ton of models right away, but they took a lot of damage. This group I'm allowing to just go into the Norsk and Ice Trolls just to tie them down. And kind of the same deal with this Razor Gore Herds. And then a Pit of Shades going off. It's going to do absolutely nothing to my Razor Gore Herds. Uh, but it will hurt my Ungors. Pulling out with my chariots. We did get the frontal charge that I wanted, but get in there, guys. Get in there. And then from the rear, I managed to engage and lock down the Marauder Horsemen. I did kind of a, a like a pincer move with my harpies from this side and this side and made it so that the horsemen really had no chance. And in a 3v2, I like my odds with the harpies. And we're going to be putting some Ungor Spearman herds with their anti-large. Um, they're going to go on top of the Beasts of Tashnar. Actually, the Beasts of Tashnar are not large. I don't know why I thought they were large. Uh, they're going to crush me in this spot. I get a rear charge with the Harpies. Looking to do some more damage. Going to be supporting with the Ungors. I just want to tie them down here. Chaos Spawn have finally made it in. They're going to be fighting against the Famir Warriors who are absolutely going to crush them. The Skin Wolves as well. This is like the worst engagement that I made the entire battle. But I needed to pin these guys in because I'm looking to win this fight if I can. Scroll of Power being used so that the Famir Barrel Fiend can continuously cast. Gonna try and keep a lookout for what it is exactly that they're casting. My biggest challenge this battle is to constantly be bringing my units back into the fold. You'll notice, guys, I brought no magic. I wanted to overwhelm whatever army I was going up against as quickly as possible. I was expecting some sort of Wolfric build, uh, you know, with a penumbral pendulum. That's kind of the standard build that I see quite often. 
But that's not the case. My opponent brought elite infantry, which was very interesting. And I'm just overwhelming everything I can. I don't want to take any fair fights. Whatever fair fights there were, I wanted to hold them off for as long as I could. And I'm just rallying everything. If I see something routing off, I try to chase it. Like these Norskin Ice Trolls, I don't want these guys coming back. They're an expensive unit. They're already up to 70 kills. Brutal. And a pendulum going off here. That hurt, but at the end of the day, that's a 350 gold unit that I don't really care about. We've got some Razor Gore Herds need to come back. What else is going on in the backfield here? Almost had these Spearmen off. Chase them off. We're going to go ahead and engage them here. I think I'm breaking off these Ungor Spearmen to go and do that. Leaving my Chariots in. So, you can leave your Chariots in as long as they're not the ones getting focused. You can see here, uh, this Chariot unit is starting to take hits. I think I'm going to pull them out any second now. But as long as my uh, my actual Lord isn't the one taking the damage, I'm happy just to let him sit in here and do his best to kill, you know, Berserkers and stuff. But this is such a powerful group. This is what I was trying to prevent, actually. Skin Wolves, Famir, the Lord, the Caster, and Berserkers all from, like, sitting on top of each other. Uh, but we're going to break that right now. Or at least we're going to hold it in place. And my opponent's actually going to break it by pulling the Skin Wolves out here and bring it to this other group. That was probably a mistake. The Norskin Ice Trolls are routing the Marauder Spearmen and this group of Marauder Champions. Only three of them left. They're shattered, I do believe. I broke them. I hit them in the back with my Beast Lord. And now that frees up all of these Ungor Spearmen herds to go and do more work. Hopefully some of this stuff is going to be rallying. I don't I don't expect these groups of Razor Gore herds really to rally. One of my chariots has broken. Uh, but I expect them to rally. There you go. Chase them off. Don't let them get back. This could honestly be the turning point in the battle. Taking off nine uh, trolls here. Not sure what it's being cast. It looks like a Melkoth, but I can't see what it's being cast on. But my opponent has rejoined all of his forces. And I'm just going to charge in with my Beast Lord. Trying to get some picks on the Femir. Anything I can. It's sort of awkward. But every now and then my guy will land a hit. But we're just swarming. It's just the quality of stuff we're fighting is so much higher. We need to break the Skin Wolves. We need to break the Berserkers. Harpies are really great for rear charges, as are the Chariots. And Arcane Conduit going off on the Femir. Yeah. The Marauder Chieftain is just casting whatever he can. A Melkoth's lowering my speed on my Razor Gores. Probably trying to prevent me from chasing off these skin wolves. But I've got other stuff. I think once I saw that happening, I brought my other Razor Gore chariots who were here charging in. And I redirected them to the skin wolves here. But we need to break these guys. Let's see if we can do that. Their leadership is so low. Even that limp limp charge. Uh, can we kill any models? No, they turn around and instantly dunk my models. But yeah, there we go. We broke them with another charge from other Razor Gores. The Harpies are coming in. Once again, this is a group that we have to get off the battlefield. Their regeneration, just like the Trolls, uh, is going to make them super problematic into a late game uh, scenario. I have this one group of Ungor who are holding. They've surrounded the Chieftain and the Femir. And they're doing their best jobs. But what it's allowing me to do is to rally all of my forces into one spot. Chasing these Berserkers off the battlefield as well. Now I'm going to be able to pull all my forces back in. I think that's everything, right? I kept out. This is exactly what I was doing during the battle: was spinning around and looking to see uh, if I had anything left. Let's lock these guys down. My beast lord is going to chase down these Famir. I don't even want three of these guys to come back. Uh, I wasn't sure if this was the right move during the battle, but I didn't have anything else fast, really, other than this one group of harpies, uh, who I really wanted in this fight for their kind of density and their weapon strength. If I had had some other chariots here, I would have used them to chase off the, the Famir. But I used my Lord. And this was a problem because I didn't have any other sources of leadership here. And when my opponent started to cast stuff like Melkoths on my Harpies, which, I mean, really, really did a number on them. Did a lot of HP damage at the very least. It was problematic because my units started to run away. I have no leadership here. It gave them a chance to kind of pull back into this. Uh, and I was like, you know what? My lord chased down and killed every single Famir. So then I brought him back in. The squishier target is 100% the Famir Balefiend. 
And we got a big hit there, it looked like, on the Marauder Chieftain. But I'm trying to get down the Famir Barefiend. I don't want to see any more cast this battle. But they were, we're sort of taking them down at a sort of even rate. And I, I want to pick one off. Looks like we got some nice hits on the Famir there. My stuff is rallying. Thankfully, I've got the Ungor Spearmen. They are anti-large. And I've just got kind of too much left. I've got too much left for the Chieftain and the Famir to do anything about it. Really overwhelming build. I don't know if that was any fun to play against. Uh, but I had some terrible engagements. My Razor Gore Herd and Chaos Spawn that ran into the Trolls and ultimately the Famir got crushed. Yeah, I was about to say, their value is probably insane. What I didn't get a chance to do after I played this, or at least what I didn't think to do, was to sit and look at my value stats here and see who really paid for themselves this battle. Um, Beast Lord, good damage, pretty proud of him, um, and was able to stick around into the late game. Didn't have really that many tools to try and snipe him this battle, but I also was being very careful with him. Uh, of all the units I had on the battlefield, he was the one I was microing the most. My Ungor Spearman hurts. 851 damage value on those guys. They all like more than pay for themselves. That's incredible actually. Uh, meanwhile, the guys who took the, the brunt of the fighting, I was kind of expecting perhaps some javelins or, or you know, some throwing axes. So I put my shielded units in the middle, even though they were the more expensive. And because of that, they ended up taking, you know, the majority of the damage. My chariots did fine. I think they're a thousand gold apiece, so they, they pretty much broke even. And the harpies value is not even just in the, the damage that they did, uh, but also having the mobility to chase stuff off the battlefield is quite nice. And then my, uh, man, my, my Timons and my Pumbas. That's basically what this whole army is. A bunch of Timons with a bunch of Pumbas. Um, they didn't do great. My opponent just had a little bit too much in the Monstrous category. Um, the Famir, the Skin Wolves, and the Norskin Ice Trolls all beat the heck out of Razor Gore Herds. Um, and my Chaos Spawn. But had it been more of like a Marauder-centric build... Just tons of Marauders mixed in with some Berserkers, perhaps, which is what you normally see. Um, cut the Champions, just way more Marauders. Um, way more Norse, uh, Marauder Horsemen, which is what I was expecting. And then maybe one or two of these types of units. And just a really wide, deep, kind of dangerous build. Um, I think we would have smashed through them. But instead, we hit a solid wall of Marauder Champions, who didn't quite pay for themselves. This group here, we broke really fast. Uh, we did probably 50% of the HP in the first couple seconds of engagement with double Razor Gore Herds. And I wish I had maybe microed a little bit more. Uh, I thought they would do, my, my Razor Gore Herds would do a little bit better versus the Trolls, but that was just not the case. And yeah, man, the, uh, the Werewolves here, the Werekin, they did great. The Famir I expected to do great. The Beast of Tashnar and the Marauder Horsemen, I was able to kind of corral and, and send them off the battlefield right away. The Famir paid for it itself. The Lord didn't quite, but did a lot of damage. The actual damage dealt numbers are very high. Yeah, this group here at 12,000. They were just chewing through my, my chaff infantry the whole time. Yeah, these guys 12,000 as well. 12,000 here. Yeah, I mean, I love the Marauder Champions, especially in, in campaign. But I think a lot of times against factions with really cheap infantry... You can get away with bringing kind of like tier 2 blender units like the like the Berserkers are. I think had these two units been Berserkers, you take that extra money, maybe you get another group of Spearmen, something like that. Maybe the build is improved slightly versus um, the Beastmen. Just a thought. Unless I'm bringing like Bestigors, these guys, they're a little bit overkill. But really great play from Count Garen of Kassab. Uh, he was consolidating his forces, he was he was picking correct targets, he was falling back when he needed to, uh, but I loved his build, it was just a fun, fun build, and uh, yeah, had fun playing against it. Guys, not taking a mage is not always the right choice, uh, I do it sparingly, I usually do it with Beastmen and Greenskins, and even sometimes with Skaven, even though Skaven have access to really good spells, let's be real, everyone has access to really good spells, uh, but... Skaven has some really great synergistic spells that I like, um, that are really easy to use and easy to target and easy to get value from. Uh, but with the Beastmen, with especially the Beastmen, because of the Vanguard that I was able to do, um, had my opponent 
you know, Norskins aren't really the best to display this type of build against. Had my opponent been playing as the High Elves, as the Empire, I would have been right on top of him from the very beginning. I would have smashed through the front line with my Razor Gore Herds, and I would have been on the top of whatever archers, whatever artillery. I would have been pushing all my mass through as quickly as I can. The Harpies would have enveloped archers as soon as the battle started. That's when this build is at its best. Um, against this build, magic would have been better. Honestly, cut one of these Chaos Spawn, uh, bring a mage, doesn't even really matter what kind, probably, probably Beast, I mean, Lore of Beasts is good, uh, Lore of the Wild is good, I mean, they're all, they're all good versus this type of build, just something to get some AoE damage, uh, some summons, you know, could have, could have got some Saigor summons, would have been devastating versus this build, uh, they would have had to come to me, which would have been even worse for them. You know, Cygors dunking boulders on Marauder Champions. But anyway, just a little bit of thought. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. My name's Brett. Channel's Good Talk Gaming. And as always, y'all, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.